What is up guys, it's T, and today I'll be teaching you how to 3D motion track. I'm sorry for the audio quality, if it sounds a little sketchy, I'm doing this off on my laptop's mic. Okay, well we'll just go and get straight into it. You'll need three programs for this. Buju, Cinema 4D, and an editing program that can render an image sequence from a video. That might have sounded a little weird at first, but what you'll need to do is take this video, and you're going to want to take this clip, and you're going to want to put some 3D stuff in it. And to do that, you're going to need to be able to render an image sequence. The two most popular choices for editing is usually Sony Vegas and After Effects. I'm using Vegas for this. It doesn't matter because our main focus is going to be on Buju and Cinema 4D. Um, you don't really do much in this program except render out the video. And after you learn how to 3D motion track from this tutorial, you can run around with your mom's camera screaming oh my god look at this mom i put 3d text in my room and she's gonna look at you like you're a retard anyways we'll get straight into this first thing you're gonna want to do is take your video um this would be my 60 fps cinematic and i'm just gonna go ahead and render this out as an image sequence um png would probably be the highest quality image quality but I'm going to use JPEG for the sake of the tutorial and I don't think it changes it too much but I'm going to use JPEG and render it in my desktop folder into sequence. I already have a sequence here but I'll just override it and I'll let you know when this is done. Okay guys our image sequence is rendered and just in case you're wondering it doesn't matter what you name it when you render it as an image sequence just make sure you put it in a folder because if you don't know an image sequence is going to render a bunch of pictures so if you saved it on like your desktop without putting it in a folder you're going to have a bunch of pictures all over your desktop but we're going to go straight into this now okay since you've rendered your image sequence you're going to just want to open up Buju. and by the way motion tracking is honestly really easy and anybody told you it was hard they, they were lying or they weren't paying attention and a lot of people might think this is hard or they took one look at it and, oh man I can't do this I don't know why because it's honestly really easy and if you notice any sluggish parts in this video it's kind of it's because my laptop's getting hot so I'm sorry if things look a little weird here and there but that shouldn't really be a big issue but anyways guys yeah, let me just go and back up a second when you first load up Buju, you're going to want to import a sequence, which is going to be your only option, really. So we'll just import a sequence. We're going to go to our desktop folder where we saved our image sequence, or wherever you saved your image sequence, don't matter. Um, desktop. Seek to sequence. And, and you're going to want to pick the first frame of the sequence. Because if you picked like one over here or something, it would probably start off the video from this frame instead of the first frame in the video. But um, we'll select that first frame. My my frame rate 60. You use a 30 FPS clip, whatever. Just make sure you set the frame rate to whatever it is. And notice after you apply, it's gonna put the frame rate back to what 25 or whatever it was sometimes, or at least it does that on mine. But you'll just select 60 again hit apply, close, and you'll be ready. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, we got our sequence imported, we're gonna track features with this right here. Click this. Um, there's advanced options to select larger points, um, select more. I'm gonna do that, you don't have to do that. You can just, it's just to get it a little more precise, a little more pristine, whatever you like. But it doesn't matter, you could just go ahead and click track features and start depending on your clip you might just need it more or less you can ha there's different options to do stuff in here of course but we're just keeping it basic for what we need it for so I'll just go ahead and start this and what it's going to do is it's going to track the motion in the video what objects are really moving what objects are st sitting still on certain points like you can see the floor is obviously being pushed this way but the wall right here is just kind of sitting there and we'll just let this render through and we'll hit you back up after this is done. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're back. Um, okay. Okay, so we got our motion. We got our um, feature strike. Now we're going to go to our camera stall. Um, our camera stall button's right here. This is going to smooth everything out so we have our actual points to decide where we're going to put our stuff. So after we click camera stall, I'm going to click optimize camera stall. Camera path movement. You don't necessarily have to do this one, I don't think. You can select it if you want, but 
I'm just going to select Optimize Camera Smooth Smoothness and start. Now this one doesn't take too long for me. I guess it just depends on your computer. I don't know. But this should be done in a second. And now you can see we have our smooth points for our motion trike. All right here. That doesn't look too bad to me. I think that's pretty good. So now that we've got our points, we're going to select our scene geometry right here. And that's going to show where we have that's gonna select where like that's gonna show where like the x and y axis is so it shows you where the object should be facing what direction it should be turned in stuff like that it'll actually determine where the um, floor is so you want to be careful and make sure you have this the way you want it or it's not gonna look right in Cinema 4D but we're gonna add a chord in it our origin which I guess will be our main point of reference connect that update we're gonna add another one which will be our x-axis and you're going to want to make these as straight as possible let's see we just come a little closer let's see where we where we want our text I think I'm going to put my text about right here so probably make our x-axis something like this maybe the straightest as possible I'm going to click one point, hold control, click another. You're going to want at least like two points for your X and Y axis. Connect this, update it, add another coordinate, Y axis. Um, and we'll just pick one that's going pretty much straight up and down, closest to the X axis. We'll see how this one works. I'm not sure how this is going to look right here, but we'll see. This can take a little playing around with. It usually takes a little playing around with for me. But, um, it just depends, I guess. Our Z-axis, which will pretty much determine our depth. Let's look at our X-axis, where the X-axis is. Go to our Z-axis. Select from maybe around right here, right here. We'll see how that looks. Connect that. Update. Now that you've got your coordinates made, which we'll probably have to adjust, we're going to add a test object, which will show what the object's going to look like in the camera. And honestly, I don't think that looks too bad. I think that just might work. I think I'll leave it like this. I think this is going to work. We'll just go ahead and delete our test object. Close this out. And this is where we're going to save our track. Export camera solve. And since we're doing this in Buju, I mean not Buju, we're doing this in Cinema 4D. We're going to save it as Cinema 4D. You can save it as After Effects or whatever program you're using. But most likely you're using Cinema 4D. We're going to scale the scene by 100. You're going to want to make sure to do that because it's going to make sure your video size is correct. If you scale it by anything else, um, you're probably going to screw it up. So we'll just go and save this to our desk, not our desktop. You can save it wherever, but I'm going to save it in my document. It's tight, I guess. So scene scale, scene by 100, static camera moving scene. All your stuff should look like this. This is about it. Go ahead and save this. Now we're going to exit this out. Now you can save this. This is your Buju project. Which so if you need to go ahead and... This is basically a backup. So you'll want to save this as maybe something like T's backup. And basically what that'll do is if you're there's something wrong with your track or something or wrong with your points, you just go back and retrack it again or change your coordinates and fix it up. So now here's the fun part. We're going to just go ahead and find out where our file is. Searching documents. What did I say that on? Okay, saved it under T-type. Go ahead and open this up. This might take a second. Now, like I said before, my laptop's kind of heating up right now, so I don't know how smooth this is going to be, but we'll work with it. Um, scale by 10, I think we just leave it as that. Lights, textures and just go ahead and open it up and this is where your track is going to be this little this little box right here this i call it this box but this top knoll is going to be where your motion track point is that's where your camera is you can make multiple top knolls basically cameras and that'll be like if a camera's going forward one text you turn the corner and then there's some more text that's what that's for i might cover that in another tutorial if this one gets enough attention but for right now we're going to want to add our video into this, so we're going to create a new material right here. Double click that material, click texture, 
and you're gonna want to go to where your sequence is saved and I saved mine under sequence 2 sequence 1 is something else from something I was doing earlier you're gonna want to select your first frame in the sequence where you started your track okay now that you got this you're gonna want to click texture again then up here you're gonna go to animation and calculate that animation and it's gonna load all of your frames for your video now we'll create a background which is where you're gonna take this material and lay it right here so now your video is gonna show up and again my laptop is hot so I'm just gonna save this my laptop's hot so this is gonna be a little tough to preview but as you can see the points right here you move further up in the video the points still there because we tracked it we're badasses you're a badass now for tracking this but now you're gonna want to add a floor and a floor is basically where your reflections and stuff are gonna shine off to and this doesn't look like the most perfect floor which is what I was saying when I said you're gonna want to make your coordinates as accurate as you want as possible or you'll have undesired result now you're gonna want to go to where your background is you're gonna want to hold control click the material that you put onto your background and drag it onto the floor and now you have your floor in but if you render this out it's gonna be dark around the edges so then you don't want that so to fix that, you're going to right click your floor, go to Cinema 4D, tags, compositing, and then composite background. And after you composite your background and you render, this is zoomed in. Now there's no blackness. So now your floor is cleanly meshed with the background. Now this is where we're just going to get into adding whatever objects or text you want in the video. I'm just going to add text which is what generically is done. You can click Mo Graph up here, then go to Mo Text. We'll give it a second. Mo Text will show up in the video. If you just drag this out to another part in the video, you'll see that the text is still tracked. And you can do this with whatever video. It doesn't matter as long as it's track track. So I'm just going to name this text Tease Cut. If you want your text to look a little rounded around the edges, you'll go to the caps tab, click fill it cap on both ends. And I usually use around 2.3 for the radius, doesn't matter. That's just going to make small rounded edges around the text. And whenever you're moving your text, you're going to want to probably make sure to use this right here, these arrows, so it stays on the plane, because if you move it any other way, it might throw it off. But just play around with it. We're going to change our font, see how this looks, we'll just use that, drag our text over, pull it out of it, and see how this looks. It's a little slanted with the floor, but we'll try to make it work, just go to rotation. Okay, now we're going to get into lighting and materials. You can use basic materials. I'm going to go, you can download material packs and light rooms. And you can just drag a light room in here and that will pretty much light it for you after some adjustments. Or you can just add a light, it doesn't matter. And we'll just drag this material onto the text. And now our text is just is colored, but it doesn't look too realistic, so you're just going to want to add a light for that. Pull that light up. And the lighting can be tricky, and it's going to take a little bit of adjustments. Pull this out, go to the shadow tab, because obviously you're probably going to want shadows. Select like shadow map soft. And depending on how you rendered it and how your floor looks, you're going to want to adjust the shadows, but how you can see... It has the shadows and it looks a lot better with the lighting. Now playing with your lighting can make this look more or less better. As you can see it's, some, it's sketchy in some areas but it just depends on your lighting. What you might want to do is take this light, copy it over, and make two lights here. And pull this light out. 
wrong with you? No, it wouldn't do it. No, it's charged. That doesn't look too bad. You can adjust the lighting to match the scenery. But if we just leave it like that, that that's pretty much gives you a basic idea. <laughs> and your motion track is now put together. Alright. Like I said before, right. you can use the light rooms. Oh yeah, by the way, when your camera's coming out, don't let your camera go through your tights or go through your objects because yeah. that just looks retarded. But now, like this, that should pretty much give you a basic idea. And now you've made your motion track. Now that you made your motion track, you're going to want to render this out. Now if you already have this set up, you can go and skip this and render. But I'm just going to go through this really fast and show you what you just have to have set up for basic for your basic video. Video clip is 108. It's not 1080. It's 720p, which is what I recommend you just render your stuff as. So you can do whatever. 1080 by 720. Resolution. To, um, leave all this the way it is. Frame rate 60. Now an important thing to do is make sure your frame range is set to all frames and not current frame or that's just going to render one picture, like one image. And you want a video, so you're going to want to render all frames. Important thing to remember. Um, save. So I'm just wondering it is an AVI. Um, I would make, yeah, make sure you're anti-aliasing is set the best. 2v2, 4x4. If you don't know what anti-aliasing is, it smooths any rough edges and makes it really clean. So it's definitely something you want to do. But if you leave this off, it'll render really fast. So if you want a fast render time over anti-aliasing, go ahead. Another important thing you can do is render ambient occlusion and global illumination by clicking this effect tab right here, opening this up. But that takes forever. It's a really long render time depending on your computer and if your computer is like mine, that is just, it's hell. So I just recommend rendering it as is and it looks good enough just for a small cinematic. So I'm just going to leave that as is and render this out. Oh, and another important thing you can do to give this a little more ambient lighting, um, you can render it with a sky. And just hold control and drag the thing like you did with control drag from the background to the floor. Just drag it over to your sky. And that'll add a sky so like like the back and the top of your text is a little more illuminated than it would be. And that's what the sky does, but just for time's sake I'm just gonna render it without the sky. So I'll catch up with you guys after this render's done. Okay, so now that the render is done and I've dropped the clip into Vegas, you can see right here on the timeline that it's smoothed out pretty well. It doesn't look too bad. So I hope this tutorial really helps you out. And I only really touched the basics, well, the essentials of what you needed to know for motion tracking. But there's a ton of things you can do with Bougie and Cinema 4D. So don't limit yourself to just this. There's a lot more you can learn with this. And if this tutorial gets enough attention, then I'll do a more advanced video with more camera angles, stuff you can do with more cameras, some, some material overlays, better lighting, just some more oh, stuff shit. that you can do with this. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this tutorial up. And if this helped you out, just drop a comment saying what I could have done to do better or how much this helped you out. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for future videos.